friend, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Expecting Good Things. We're your host, Chopper. And Kristen. If you see me blinking, it's because just before we went <laughs> on air, my wife was trying to fix my hair, yes. and she put her knuckle in my left eyeball. I didn't mean to. Well, it still hurt. I'm sure it's it kind did, because of... <laughs> that's a pretty big knuckle. You hit me. I didn't mean to. It's still hurting. No, it's all right. <laughs> hey, we're so glad you've joined us today. We have a wonderful program today. For the next three days on this broadcast, you're going to hear Pastor Kristen preaching Yay. on the importance of right focus. Is that I got it right? Correct. Oh my, this is such an amazing sermon. Every day there is going to be something great you're going to get out of this message. And you don't want to miss Thursday's broadcast, especially. You don't want to miss tomorrow's broadcast. And you don't want to touch that dial, slide your <laughs> finger, check your email, or check a text. You want to stay tuned. You want to watch this. Share it with somebody, because today is going to be great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm telling you, it, you did such a great job. I remember when you preached this message, it really, it challenged me. It touched me. And I'm just glad you're my wife. <laughs> I am too. Uh, yes, yes. Hey, we've got a song that we're about to go into. To a couple of years ago, I think it was 2000 and no, 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 rewind. It was 2020, I believe it was, was when the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and we could yes, not have the exactly Sherwood Mayor's Prayer yep. Breakfast all together like we normally do. So we did one virtually. So uh -huh. when we did, um, the praise team here at Rock City Harvest Church at the time, as yeah. we were known, we came out and we uh, sang, which was me, my daughter, Caitlin, Sydney, Zoe, and... Nicole and my son was helping with cameras and directing so right. that's why he wasn't on stage playing drums anyways here they come to sing and help me sing every praise is due our God every praise is due our God every word of worship with one
I really like that song. Oh, I do it's too. It's such a. I think I wear it out at church. Well, you did, <laughs> but we've taken a break. But it's really good. And Zoe was so little. Oh, she was. Just two years. It was before makeup. I know. It was before her hair got cut. And, <laughs> but, but all of them have matured so much. Yes, they have. I mean, Caitlin's about to graduate. Sydney's a oh, sophomore in college. As a matter of fact, Sydney was still in high school. Yeah. When that was recorded. Yes, she was. My goodness. They had it's such a blessing. Hey, if you talk about music and such a blessing, we are so glad that we get to announce to you. Yes. We shared a little bit with shared a little bit with you yesterday. Every Saturday night from six to nine PM on ninety nine point five FM Faith Talk ninety nine point five KDIS here in Little Rock. It's a part of the Salem uh, media group. Right. It's it's called the Super Southern Super Southern Gospel Show <laughs> yes. on uh, FM radio. It's also on iHeartRadio. And Kristen and I, we're the host. I've got so many things it's going through my head. It's a lot of fun. And it was, it was oh, so much fun. We had a blast. And, you know, it's been a while since I've heard Southern Gospel oh, music regularly goodness. because yes. it isn't on any radio station here. And so that's why it's such a blessing to have it on Saturday night. And, it's, and as, as long as I've been here, there's never been an FM presence Yeah, with the quality of the FM radio of Southern Gospel music. Right. Well, now there is. We've played stuff like the Cathedrals, yeah. Arkansas's own the Martins. We played some oh, local artists. Uh, we played my dad, one of his songs. We played his story. Yes. Uh, Anthony, who that's is cousin. your cousin. Uh, Garrett Sutherland, another local guy who graduated right down the road at Abundant yeah. Life. You said you remember when he was little playing basketball. That boy yeah. had never been little. He's six foot seven baritone. <laughs> but we played the Isaacs, the the Happy Goodman family, Kenny Henson, the Hensons. It was just some good music. Yeah. Judah and I went into the studio and we put together a little jingle yeah, for the did a intro good job. of the program. Hey, that I want fun. you to check it out, and we're going to show you a little bit of what we did the other night. So uh, check it out. Well, it's the Super Southern Gospel Show. Now that was some fun putting that together. I bet it was. I, I enjoyed watching y'all, even though it was a lot of fun, even though I didn't play any instruments. <laughs> it's kind of like shake and bake and I help. Uh, <laughs> Judah went in the studio. He laid the drum track down. That's my son Judah playing the drums for that. And uh, I put together the rest of the parts for the music. And we just wrote the jingle. And I had an idea. Yeah. And I was, I was going to farm it out. I had some buddies who can play a whole lot better than me. <laughs> but the time crunch, we had to get it done. And it turned out pretty good. I it think was it fun. turned out just fine. Some folks called me. Uh, they said, is, "Is that Hank Williams Jr. or Jerry Lee Lewis?" I'm like, "Hey, either way, those guys are phenomenal musicians." So tune in every Saturday night from six to nine. If you're out of state or you're not in the Little Rock market, you can use the iHeartRadio app and yes. just click on Faith Talk 99.5 FM KDIS Little Rock. <laughs> All right, I had from a radio voice on there. Of course, it was fun. But we're now going into your message. Right. Yes, it's going to be great. The power of or the importance of right focus, yes. right? The importance of right focus. Yeah. When you preach this message, Kristen, uh, you wouldn't even tell me what you were going to preach. You, nope. She kept it quiet. It was like top secret. It was like the State of the Union address or something. <laughs> and uh, she... I knew what God was speaking to oh me. Oh, my goodness. Girl, you walked out and you just... You you did a phenomenal job. This is Thank the first you. time you preached as you know, yeah, co-pastor here at Rock City. And you brought such insight. Now, this was preached on Mother's Day. Mother's Day of 2021, my dad had already gone to be with the Lord just, I mean, what, even a full month earlier. Mm -hmm. And you brought such a timely word. It was for mothers, but guys, don't turn the channel. Yeah. Don't turn it, this off. It's for us, it's too. It's not just for moms no. or women. It's for anybody. Yes. Now, previously on other programs, we'd sometimes jump right in the middle of the sermon and, and, and just kind of connect with you. But this part today, we're not, you're not going to see us until we get to the end of the program. So <laughs> I want you to hear this section in its entirety. Stay tuned. Here we are. Kristen preaching on the importance of right focus. I just want to talk to you this morning. If you didn't see it in the handout, it's called about the importance of right focus. 
And you know us moms, we can have our focus scattered all over the place. I mean, we can just be, like Chopper said earlier, walking around like a chicken with, a chicken with our head cut off. We do that often. And sometimes we can just be going so crazy that we lose focus in the right direction. So I want to tell, start you with a mom joke. This little boy comes to his mom and he says, Mom, can I have $20? And she looks at him and she says, do I look like I'm made of money? And the boy thinks for a minute, he's like, well, isn't that what MOM stands for? Made of money? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's pretty cute because our kids think we're made of money sometimes. I mean, I think they think it grows on trees or something because Sydney and, I mean, Sydney, well, they used to do it, but Judah and Zoe, they're always needing something, especially Judah, needing some kind of money for school. But, you know, like I said, we as moms are sometimes super busy. I mean, so busy that we lose track of time sometimes. And there aren't many days that go by that we don't have something to do. If you're a mom, especially a mom of younger children, you're always doing something. But even though my kids aren't young, young anymore, Judah and Zoe keep us on our toes with sports. So we're always doing something. So we're pretty good multitaskers too. I am, uh, I think his dad used to kind of get tickled at me and sometimes didn't quite understand how I could multitask or had the gift of um, delegation because you get so many things that you have to do, you've got to find help. So we have all these different, I call them modes, like work mode, mom mode, um, cleaning mode. Like if I'm in a cleaning mode, you better not talk to me. You better try not to. You better not try to get me to do anything because when I'm in that cleaning mode, I want to get it done and stay focused until it's completely done. So in those modes, you could call them modes or compartments or focuses. So that's really what they are. They're individual focuses that we deal with each day. So they usually consist of a mom mode, a wife mode a daughter mode, a sister mode, an employee mode, a boss mode, a friend mode, a cleaning mode, a chauffeur mode. I mean, the list can go on and on. Because if you've got school-aged children, you know what it feels like to be a chauffeur. Because when Zoe and Judah go to school, we leave, take them to school, come back home, go pick up Zoe, come back home, go pick up Judah, and come back home. The trip is 24 miles round trip. So I often feel like I'm wearing a chauffeur's hat, <laughs> and it can get tiring and frustrating sometimes, but you just have to keep everything in the right focus. Those are also considered our circumstances. You know, our circumstances of life, circumstances of different things we deal with in a day. And our circumstances can be just completely delightful if we focus correctly. We can have a pleasant day, we can have an easygoing day if we know how to prioritize. And if we keep ourselves calm, and if we keep God at the top, the very top each and every day, and even if we don't feel like it, even if we can only spend just a few minutes with God in the morning, now make it a point to strive to stretch that time out further and further. But you know what? When we take God out of the picture, we only see our problems. And we only see the negative aspects of our life, such as, the irritation that comes with having to go back and forth to the school or the irritation of having to clean up after the kids and keep the house clean when it never seems to stay clean. When we focus on the negative, that becomes an issue. Because you see, the problem isn't with our circumstances. The problem is with our focus. And you know what? If the enemy can get our focus, and he tries, he tries all the time. But if he can get our focus, he can disrupt our lives. And he can disrupt everything that we've got going on. And then that filters on into our children, our friends, whoever we deal with on a daily basis. So instead of focusing on that, we need to take it to Jesus. And when we take it to Jesus, then he helps us keep everything in order. You know, God designed us moms to be able to handle a whole lot of different things. And you know, like I said earlier, we wear a whole lot of hats. At the same time, he designed us that way. We're able to handle a whole lot of things. But you know what? We are able to handle those things when we have him number one. When we have God number one, 
Everything else can fall in line and be perfectly easy. Sometimes all the things, all the different things that we have to deal with on a daily basis, we can feel overwhelmed. I know I have had my times of being overwhelmed or feel like I'm pulled in all kinds of different directions. And to the point where you just want to scream at somebody or you want to pull your hair out. Because sometimes when you're pulled in so many different directions, say your mom and you get up and you take care of the kids in the morning and then you sh- chauffeur them to school and then you come home and you clean up the house and then you have to go to the grocery store and then all of a sudden it's time to go get the kids and take them to whatever practice they go to. And then they, you have to go to a ball game and you sit there and you cheer them on and watch their ball game and then you come home. And by the time you come home, it's probably 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Well, then guess what? Wife mode comes in to play. And when wife mode comes into play, sometimes you ain't got nothing left to give. And you're just like, I just want to go to sleep. So, <laughs> so those are things that can overwhelm us when we don't keep everything lined up right. But you know what? There are some days I do have different focuses, such as some days I'm sports mom. I go and I sit at my kids' ball games, and I watch them. I cheer them on, and I love it, and I, have, I enjoy it, whether it be football, basketball, track, and this year, baseball. I mean, it's like we haven't had a break this year, but it's, it's fun. So sometimes I'm chauffeur. Sometimes I'm cook, maid, friend, daughter. Those are not ever all the same in one day. They kind of jump from day to day. I'll do one thing this day, another thing this day, and it just all changes. But you know what never changes? Never changes is I'm always wearing the mom hat and the wife hat. We never take those off. And I have a friend that lost her son when he was 17 years old. But you know what? She's still his mom. And she will always be his mom. So she still wears that hat because she still thinks about him. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter if your children are a little tiny baby like that precious one in the back or if your children are grown and gone and out of the house and have children of their own that have children of their own. You're still their mom. That will never change. And so we wear those. We have to balance all of these things. And sometimes we don't do a very good job of that. And uh, Chopper kind of touched on it earlier. I am an excellent example of that. The whole first part of this year, first four months of 2021, I didn't do a very good job of balancing my life. It really kind of started probably shortly after Christmas, around Christmas time. I was, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't have my focuses in the right spot. I was a daughter. I was a caretaker. I was a decision maker of some decisions I didn't want to make, never thought I'd have to make. I was an information recorder, I was a nurse, I was a mom, and I was a wife. And those, at times, were pretty heavy roles to wear and put on, It's pretty heavy hats to wear. And you know what, I didn't have much time to be cook, friend, maid, keeper of the house, homework helper, and you know, and sometimes I really didn't have as much time to be the mom I needed to be. And my kids suffered, my two that are at home, they suffered because their grades suffered because I wasn't able to give them the attention that they needed. And you know what? Because of all my focus being on my dad, and when he passed away, had a very short time to grieve my dad, because my dad and I were very close. I was his baby girl, and he told everybody I was. So I went straight into from that into taking care of my other dad, Chopper's dad. So... The reason why that's an excellent example is because I let myself go in certain areas of my life, with the the top one being my quality time with God. Didn't mean I forsook him, forsaken him, however you say that. I'm usually very good with words. It doesn't mean that I didn't spend time with God, but I didn't make it my priority for the top of the list, the top of my day. And I suffered with that. And number two is caring for myself by remembering to eat and exercise, and even being able to shower some days. Some days I felt like I was going, oh, I can wear this again. <laughs> no, I, I don't smell. I'll be fine. Because if it was comfortable, I just got up, had my coffee, and went next door. 
I, I at least brush my teeth and wash my face. I never go anywhere without brushing my teeth. That's just nasty. But <laughs> in that time frame, when I wasn't focusing right, when I didn't have my focuses right, I lost too much weight. Um, I made myself sick. I mean, literally sick to the point that I thought I had COVID. It was that bad. I was so sick. I hurt my shoulder. I mean, I wasn't taking care of myself, and I was exhausted all of the time. I woke up tired, and sometimes I wasn't in the greatest mood. <laughs> so, therefore, my family <laughs> suffered on that, and my friends. What were friends? I didn't have any friends. Not that I they didn't have friends. I didn't have time for my friends during that time frame. But you know what? I could have fixed that. I could have lined up my day better. I could have taken time to spend with God. Because you see, my focus was in the right place. I didn't need to be anywhere else. But it wasn't in the appropriate way. When it's in the appropriate way, everything else lines up. And you know, we can be, we can be drawn away from our quiet time with God so easily. That's one of the quickest things that we get drawn away from. And it's just, we don't even realize that it's happened until it's been a few days. And we're like, oh, I didn't spend time with God. I haven't been spending time with him at all. So I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what I'm going through. It doesn't matter because the first four months of this year, of 2021 for us, I'm telling you, it was pretty much hell. It was not pleasant. It was not fun. We must put God first. He must be up here. First and foremost, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter how important you think that information is or how important that job is or how important that person is, God has to be first. Because when you put God first, everything else, like I said, is gonna line up. And first thing in the morning, if, if you have a problem with getting yourself too busy when you get up and you get going, you gotta get everything done, do it before your feet ever hit the floor. Keep your Bible by your bed. Put it in your lap and start reading and praying before you ever get out of bed, even if it's just for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is better than nothing because you know what? The things that we focus on, they tend to magnify. And when we look away from God, when we look away from Him as our director of our life, because that's what He is, He's our life director, we begin to look at our problems. We begin to look at our issues. We begin to look at our frustrations. So therefore, they're only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until we lose it and we snap at someone or we snap at our children or we do something and we get fired from our job because sometimes we solely get focused on our circumstances of life and without God is number one. And you know, when you get solely, that means singularly, that word solely means as the only one as if it's the only thing that exists. Well, you know what? That's where your number one problem is because God is supposed to be the sole source of everything for our life. When we put him as our sole source, he's gonna provide for us. Wow, Kristen, that is so absolutely on target. We've got to keep God as our focus, as yes. he is our source. That's right, we do. We have to. Make sure our priorities stay in the right order. And with that, it's God being at the top. And, and you said when we get distracted and we, we get irritable and, uh -huh. and you yeah. snap at people. And is that when you snap at me? Is that when you're distracted? <laughs> yeah, you know, because. sometimes we end up snapping at the ones we love and oh, the ones well, we're around the most. Out of that. I love so it, it, no, it doesn't make it right. It makes it almost worse <laughs> when we snap at the people that are closest to us. So we have to be aware of that. We do. Hey, I hope you've been blessed by this today. If it has been a blessing to you, why don't you just drop us a line right there. There's an email address on the bottom of the screen, contact at rockcity.com family. I almost said something else. <laughs> You're getting better. We want to hear from you. And uh, also, if you have a prayer request, you can leave your prayer request at prayer at our... At I did it. You prayer did it. at rockcity.family. And we would love to pray with you. Yes. Listen, 
Here's how you get your focus headed in the right direction. Make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. If you've never made him the Lord of your life, say this prayer after me and believe every word of it. Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died on the cross and you rose him from the grave and I confess that he is Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Now take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, we believe you got saved. Get yourself into a good Bible-based church. If you're close to here, come see us in Rock City, 10225 yes. Highway 107 here in Sherwood, Arkansas. And drop us a line that says at amen at rockcity.family and let us know about your decision. Until next time, this is Chopper and Chris and remind you, we, we love, love you, God, God loves, loves you, and God, God has big plans, plans for, for you. you. These solo cups right here represent different modes different focuses of our lives. When we focus on just one, or maybe just two, when we focus on those, then we put blinders on us. And you know, when we put blinders on us, we have no room for God. And when we have no room for God, it becomes dangerous.